Okay, so if you have used Scrivener before, you're probably familiar with the concept of project templates, the, those templates that appear here at the very beginning of every Scrivener project. That's how your, pro your project begins, typically in this new project window here. And so today we're going to talk about how we can not only take advantage of Scrivener's built-in templates, but also how to take advantage of custom templates that we make ourselves. Let's begin. First off, we're gonna open up Scrivener, and you can see already, I have a few templates here that are already um, included that are not stock templates. Okay, I have the Epic Fantasy template, which is one of my favorites, the one I created personally for my own personal projects, and I absolutely love it. Um, I have a, the NaNoWriMo novel template, and this is available for free every time we have uh, NaNoWriMo at the end of the year in November. I also have a science fiction one I've been working on, and if we went to all of them, we could go through all these and find all sorts of great different ones that I've had. Okay, so moving right along here, we're going to jump right in, and we're going to go ahead and create a new project here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the fiction option again. We're going to create a new novel. Create it. We'll call this our uh, uh, final novel, okay? Uh, it doesn't really matter what you put as the title here. It can be anything, uh, whatever works or makes sense to you. Uh, this does not have to be the final title. Now, generally, I save my uh, Scrivener projects in Dropbox. Right now, I'm saving it locally on my machine, but that's just a heads up there. There we go. Now, the reason I'm going to show you this is because it's really easy to kind of get things set up how you like it. And actually, I like to start with a novel template that Scrivener provides stock because it's actually not how I would typically like to have it organized as a novel template. Let's say I was just starting fresh. I don't have my epic fantasy template. Maybe I'm using a different, I'm um, writing a different genre altogether, and I kind of want something just fresh to start with, but I don't have to, I don't want to have to redo and reuse the same template over and over and over again. So let me show you. There's a few things I'm going to change. First off, I'm going to get rid of this novel format. I don't typically need it. I know I can get it again and again by simply coming back in to my new project menu here and creating a new novel project. Okay, so we have the novel project here. You can see every time I create that, when I open it up, it's going to have this novel format right here, which I, I mean, may be useful to read it once or twice, but really I don't need it every single time I make a, a new novel. If I want to get it, I'll go back there and get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and trash that there. I don't need that. Um, I don't need the sample outputs. Those are nice. Uh, they can be useful, but I don't need them personally. So I'm gonna take those out. The template sheets, uh, those are the document templates I was talking about earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop them into my research folder. That includes also my notes. Okay. And I'm also gonna drop in the front matter here as well into my research. I like a really clean binder with, uh, especially in the beginning, really keep things simple, not, you know, not have a bunch of things going around. So we're going to go ahead and drag and drop those things in here. Same with places. Typically I just call places settings. Okay. I'll change that there. And even characters, I'll drop that in here too. And I might reorganize these things to how I typically use them like that. Okay. Settings. Uh, notes is going to come at the top here. So I have notes, character settings, template sheets, and then the front matter, which I hardly ever use at all until I'm actually ready to go ahead and publish this thing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and minimize that up. And we'll leave everything else pretty much the same, but we're going to close this up. What we're going to do here is we're going to click here on the manuscript folder. Um, whatever I have here, this view, whatever view I have here in Scrivener is what's going to appear when I actually open this template. So wherever you want it to appear, that's where you should click. So I might have it here right on the scene, ready to go, ready to write, right? Um, let's go ahead and go here. Go to File, Save as Template. And this is key. This is how we create our project template. Let me go ahead and save as template. Uh, it actually is the novel. So I'm going to call it Oliver's Novel Template so we can easily identify it from the other templates there. It is a fiction still, right? It's a novel. Uh, we're still going to use the same icon. Now we can add in our own icon here. Um, in the past, I found that to be a little tricky, so I'm not going to do it today, but I'll probably do a separate short video on how exactly to do. How do I change that icon once we can uh, work out the bugs, once I can work out the bugs there. Okay, so let's go ahead and click OK.
Okay, that's done now. It's inside Scrivener. Let's go ahead and open up and see. We're gonna go ahead and close out this project here. We close that out. Okay, so we've, we're in here now and we can now look and see if our novel template is there. And there it is, it's right there. We can create a new one. Now this time I do wanna give it a specific name because I'm gonna use this one as my template going forward. Anytime I wanna change this template, I'm gonna edit this specific project to make that change. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna call this Oliver's Novel Template, okay? We'll click Create. You can see there, oh wow, right where we wanted it. It opened it right in that scene there like that. We look at our research, everything is just how I left it. Even the trash, so there's a mistake. That's something I wanna change. We'll come here, empty the trash. And if I wanna update it, it's really easy to do. Now that I've emptied that trash and I don't have that trash in there anymore, I can close these up. Make sure I still have my scene selected where, or wherever I want to have Scrivener open up when I open this, when I create a new project from this template. We'll click save as template here. Once again, this is key. If we want to save it and overwrite it, then we need to have the same name. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. It's gonna ask me, do I wanna replace it or keep both? I do wanna replace it to overwrite the original because the original had some things in it I didn't want. I'll replace that. Boom, that's been done. We'll go ahead and close this out. Okay, now let's check and see if the change was made. We'll go into Oliver's novel template. We'll click Create. We'll call it this again. We'll call it, oh, actually this time we'll just call it Oliver's new novel. There we go. Make it big again. And we're gonna look at our trash. And lo and behold, there is no trash. And just like we wanted, we started here right in the editor with our first scene with that cursor flashing. So there you go. That's how it's done. Really easy to do. I just showed you how to, one, create a new project template and update it. If you're enjoying these videos, please sure to like and subscribe. It'll help me keep this channel going so we can keep getting these videos and this great content out to you. See you next time.